I want you to think of it as fasting and feasting. Fasting and feasting. Unlock the barriers in your mind and stop fasting from being a restrictive mindset and let fasting be liberating. The literal best kind of fasting to increase lifespan is actually the most fun kind of fasting. This newer evidence really paints a picture of what's important. I know that I have been seen as a fasting guy and I understand how that could make my opinion somewhat jaded and could make people look at me a certain way because I'm gonna seem biased. But I've really worked hard to try to make sure that I'm looking at this from an entire perspective. And the study that we're looking at compares fasting to caloric restriction to ad libitum, just eating as much as you want. And the results paint a very nice picture of how we should be structuring our fasting and how we should be structuring our caloric restriction if lifespan extension is our ultimate goal. So after today's video, I put a link down below for 25% off Seeds Daily Symbiotic. I'm a huge fan. It's the only probiotic that I personally use. And the interesting thing is, is they publish a lot of their own literature. So they publish their own clinical trials and sometimes it doesn't work in their favor, but they publish it anyway because they are honest. And that's what I appreciate about them. But interestingly enough, it's the only probiotic that has this multi-stage delivery system where it has a capsule inside of a capsule. So when you think about probiotics, it's easy to think supplement company sham. But the reality is, is there is not a whole lot more in the world of supplements that is more vetted out than probiotic usage. The problem is most are destroyed in the gut. So that's what I like about Seed is they put their money where their mouth is with their technology, with their clinical trials, and also just with overall customer service and quality products. So that link is down below for 25% off Seed's Daily Symbiotic. This study was published in Cell Metabolism. And before you get upset that it's a rodent model study, you have to understand that with life extension type studies, you have to look at rodents. It's just part of the game. What they did is they had one group of rodents eat ad libitum, just eat as much as you want. Here's unlimited food. Another group, they said, okay, you're going to restrict calories by 30%. So they restricted their calories 30%. And then another group, they said, you're going to fast for 21 hours. And then at the end of 21 hours, you're going to just eat as much as you want. Just go for it. Eat ad libitum. Results were pretty fascinating when they looked at life extension. They found that the mice that restricted calories and the fasting group mice had extensions in lifespan about the same. So caloric restriction or fasting extended lifespan. But what they found is that the fasting group ended up eating just as much as the control group. So the fasting group got all the benefits of life extension without having to restrict calories. They ate as much as they wanted to. Said, hey, you're done fasting, go for it. And they ate a lot. And they still got the life extension benefits. It begs the question, well, were they getting adequate nutrition, right? But what was really interesting is that when you think about it, a fasting group is going through caloric restriction for an extended period of time. During the time they're fasting, they're absolutely restricting calories. But if you look at it over the course of 24 hours, their net calorie intake was just as high, sometimes even higher than the ad libitum group. So caloric restriction shouldn't be measured over just hey, I restricted calories X amount today. Like if you restrict calories for 21 hours, that's 21 hours of serious caloric restriction, but it paints a very clear picture of something. It paints a clear picture that longevity is a balance of this caloric restriction, rest and digest kind of thing, and repair and calories. On, off, on, off, on, off, compared to, let me just simmer down my calories to 30% less and cruise on this continually eating and hoping for the best and way better than saying like, I'm just gonna eat whatever I want, whatever I want. That's not the way to look at things. So we have to dive into another study that is very well known. The nature study that looked at monkeys that were restricting calories with whole foods versus restricting calories with more of a processed chow diet. We'll break that down. What this essentially found is that when monkeys were eating a whole food, wide variety of nutrients diet, caloric restriction didn't do anything for them. It didn't extend their lifespan. But when monkeys were restricting calories with cruddy monkey chow, it did increase their lifespan. What's important to note and how we can kind of take this fasting piece into the equation is that if you're fasting, you allow yourself the benefits of the caloric restriction to occur in isolation. And then you have a period of time when you can eat a lot of good wholesome food. 
So in this particular study, they were doing a one meal a day type diet. I am not a fan of doing one meal a day all the time because I think for humans, there's too much variety in our day, right? So what I mean by that is maybe one day we are expending a lot of calories, one day we're not. One day we're active and working construction, the other day we're digging a hole in our backyard, the other day we're on the couch. So being in like severe deficit for a long portion of the day, every day, puts you at a serious risk for ending up in too much of a deficit, right? It's really hard to account for that. And that's very important because you can crash your metabolism that way. That is exactly why I recommend that people abruptly fast sort of at random a few days per week. So when you look at mice and they say, hey, like we restricted calories and had them do one meal a day for three months or something, they're in a controlled situation where they are doing the same amount of activity, same level of yada yada, whatever. Your life is dynamic. What I suggest you do is go two to three days per week where you do a one meal a day or two meal a day type diet. And the other days you eat to your heart's desire with wholesome, nutritious food. I want you to think of it as fasting and feasting, fasting and feasting. Unlock the barriers in your mind and stop fasting from being a restrictive mindset and let fasting be liberating. It's not a weird way of looking at it. It's saying, hey, this is liberating. I am gonna let myself enjoy pineapples and kiwis and watermelons and chicken and roast beef and this and that and fish and all the wonderful things that this world has to offer. And then you're gonna say, hey, I'm gonna flip that switch and I'm going into life extension mode for a little bit. And then flip the switch back on and say, hey, it's time to eat. Boom, enjoy it. And the evidence is getting stronger and stronger and stronger, suggesting that fasting is mainly beneficial because it's an isolated period of caloric restriction, not ongoing long-term caloric restriction. Because if you have subjects eat the same amount of calories and one fasts and one doesn't, a lot of times the fasting group has bigger improvements in metabolic markers because the consolidation of the caloric restriction matters. When you've turned that switch that AMPK switch, the benefits of being in a calorically restricted state. If you crank it all the way down because you're fasting hard, that is extra benefit than just being mildly in a caloric deficit. The longer you fast, the deeper the caloric deficit. So simply saying, I'm just going to eat a small amount of calories trickled throughout the day, that has some benefit, but you also miss out on fun, you miss out on nutrition, and you miss out on sort of the enjoyment that you can get out of it, not to mention potentially other metabolic factors. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.